these numbers on screen. This is the revenue generated in one month by three different YouTubers that I know. And these are their subscriber counts, which I'm gonna put in a random order for you now. I want you to guess which channel is making which amount of money, and then I'm gonna give you two more seconds before I reveal the answer. Surprised? One of the main reasons I started this channel because I wanted to open people's eyes to just how much business savvy YouTube channels are making without having millions of subscribers or millions of views. Because the reality is most of the YouTubers I talk to make 10 times less than they desire because their beliefs about YouTube monetization are all wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna debunk those beliefs so you can start earning what you deserve faster. So how have those small channels done it? Well, it's because they don't focus all their energy on getting more views, but instead better marketing and better systems that help generate revenue from the views they do get. And that's the first myth you need to forget about on YouTube. Views does not equal more money. I mean, sure, the big entertainment channels get millions of views and that makes them a ton of money, but that money often pales into comparison to the real treasure that you can unlock. And it's why Mr. Beast sells burgers and chocolate and socks. But what's cool about this is, depending on your niche, you could find that you could earn a full-time living off hundreds of views not thousands, but only if you're aware of the next few monetization myths. So let's get on to the second. Now there was something I used to want more than anything else as a YouTuber, but actually when I got it, the impact it had on me was a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> but what was it? Well, in the film Rocky, Sly Stallone is a pretty average unknown boxer, and one day he suddenly gets the chance to fight the world champion. The thing is, even though he puts up an amazing fight, he still loses. Now in YouTube terms, most people dream of making a video that gets an insane amount of views and blows up their channel to become a success overnight. The thing is, when you end up in that position before your marketing and your business is ready for it, you probably won't end up in the best place because blowing up in almost any situation is absolute chaos. Suddenly dozens, if not hundreds more people are competing for your time and attention, which means apart from the ad revenue that plops in, getting anything else done to build your business can be utter chaos. In fact, I've worked with creators who have actually needed to take a break after their channel exploded because their businesses weren't prepared for it and they were completely exhausted. Which which is, I guess, a lovely problem to have. Oh, I just realized I left my cup in shot the whole way. No one will notice that. Just pretend you didn't see that. You have to drink, I'm human, okay? Which brings us on to a bit of a chicken and an egg situation. Should you make a product first and then grow an audience or build an audience first and then make products to sell them? Well, let's look at both sides here. Now, the good thing about building the product first is that when you do blow up, you're ready to benefit from it straight away and it will hopefully be less chaotic. But the downside is that growing on YouTube is actually much harder than building a product. So if you end up building the product but have no audience to promote it with, that can mean you make no sales. And in a world where we get everything we want delivered to us in an instant, this slow and painful process can cause many people to quit. But what if you grow the audience first, then you can build your products and services around an existing community. But the common trap I see here is, it's so easy to get caught up maintaining that audience by pumping out more and more content, you run out of time to actually make a product to sell. And guess what? That's actually what happened to me. When I started my other channel, Film Booth, my plan was to build a small community who watched my content, and then we were gonna offer them editing and production as a service. We had systems in place to manage this as the work slowly started to come in. But then I realized something pretty important. This wasn't actually the type of business I was passionate about. But just as I had this realization, the channel exploded. And I felt like I had to try and capitalize on the sudden demand, so I slammed up a Calendly to do consulting call bookings, and before I knew it, I was doing eight hours a day of back-to-back -back calls with YouTubers and trying to make more videos for my new following. I basically had two jobs, and one day, and I've never told anyone this before, so I might as well just tell tons of strangers on the internet, I literally left no time between calls. So I sat at my desk for eight hours straight, talking non-stop. I had to hold on to everything my body did not want me to, and I didn't even eat. I was a mess. Idiot! Anyway, after that, I realized I had to find a less time-intensive way to run my business, which is why I shifted to put a bigger focus on digital products, cut back on content, and gave myself the time to build something far more sustainable. And that's why myth number two is that going viral is what you need to solve all of your problems. But you didn't answer the question, when do you build a product? Well, I'll answer that now. I actually think most creators would be better off building their products and systems once they start to see some slow and steady growth. And by that, I mean kind of viewers returning time and time again. But really, you do need to provide a hell of a lot of value first before you start selling because that will build trust and community but I recommend you try to get to know your viewers and consider the kind of products and services you could sell to them in the future as things start to develop and then I probably wouldn't build a massive course but something simple to start to test out your audience's willingness to support you I've got a video coming all about how to build a product system soon so subscribe so you don't miss out on that bad boy but there's another myth about why putting all your energy into getting more views is not actually an efficient way 
of monetizing. Sure, there are some niches where ads are incredibly profitable, but the YouTubers I work with who make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year just from ad revenue don't actually get that excited by it. Wait, what? Seriously. Now I know it kind of sounds a bit ungrateful this, but by the time the business savvy channels are making that much ad revenue, they're often making so much more from their products and services, it only makes up a very small percentage of their turnover. In fact, if it completely vanished, most of them wouldn't even notice. But what about channels with extremely high CPM? Doesn't that bring in the big bucks? Yeah, of course. Some people do create cash cow channels and grow entire businesses off of ad revenue alone. But starting a channel in a niche of a high CPM and making content you're not passionate about could really start to suck the fun out of this. It just becomes like a money printing exercise, potentially not much more than that, which is fine. I ain't judging if you just want to get stinking rich. I just like a bit more satisfaction. I mean, most of us start YouTube because we want to talk about something we love and we should be happy to do, even if that niche had a low CPM, which means we need to focus less on ad revenue and more on the things that are 100% within our control. And those things should hopefully get us excited about making videos. And that is why myth number three is that ad revenue is the biggest money maker out there. For some channels maybe, but for creators with systems, products and services, I tend to find it's below 10% of their turnover, no matter how high it gets. But there's one thing we still haven't talked about in this video, which for a lot of channels is where the big bucks start to roll in, and that is brand sponsorships. However, hot take alert. But actually, I think there's a lot of creators out there who might be better off without them or not prioritizing them. Let me explain. So getting paid to talk about a brand for like 30 seconds is a pretty sweet deal. But to understand my hot take, I need to talk about Liv, who I made a video about blowing up her channel on Film Booth before. So when I first met her, she had 60,000 followers on Instagram and her dream was for brands to sponsor her so that she could quit her nine to five. Now she had been doing sponsorships here and there, but when I introduced her to the world of digital products, her opinion started to dramatically change. So she produced and released her first one and it did so well that she was actually able to quit her job because of it. Now, the sponsorship offers were still coming in, but there was a problem. First, it was the amazing free product offers where brands just ask you to promote the latest pair of neon pink yoga pants to their thousands of followers in exchange for nothing more than a free pair sent directly to your door. Then it was the offers that were just insultingly low. Liz's Instagram was growing more than 2,000 followers a day, sales of her products were coming in fast, yet brands were turning up offering just pathetic amounts. Now this might not seem like a lot of work just to say yes to them, but a brand deal is almost never as simple as you'd expect. There's a constant back and forth with their marketing team, there's time spent negotiating on the contract, aligning with the brand's vision, plus time making revisions at the end, and sometimes they're a complete bunch of arseholes. Add to that the brand's 30 day payment turns, and it can end up being over a month of going back and forth over email, which if you'd put that time into working on your own product or your own marketing, you could have made 10 times more. And look, Liv's not a negotiator, and I'm not either, and I'm certain with the right guidance and the right amount of time put into it and the right amount of care taken, we'd have been able to two or three X the amount she was getting offered. But the real trap for creators here isn't what you'd expect, and the actual damage I see is it messes with your head. The stress that comes with having to prove your worth to brands over and over again just isn't worth it for a lot of people, and it can eat up hours of your brain space and really get in your worry hole, because you think things like, have I charged too much? Have I charged not enough? What do I even charge? And don't get me wrong, for some it is an amazing option, but I truly believe it depends on the type of person you are. Do you like negotiations and dealing with people on more personal terms and having to prove your value? Or do you prefer just making content and seeing the sales come in from people who already think you're a rock star? Like me, I think you're a rock star. So you can probably tell that I think digital products are a must have in a lot of YouTubers armory, but unless you understand how to market them properly, they're not gonna sell. So watch this video here if you wanna learn the simple marketing strategy one YouTuber used to earn over a hundred grand a month on his channel with less than 100,000 subscribers. It's like a dollar a subscriber. Like, happy days.